Good morning, Westside. Uh, I know we're probably just a couple minutes behind. We were having trouble getting this, uh, the signal to pick up this morning. But as you can see, the sun's coming up right here behind me. I'm going to begin this morning by reading some scripture to you. I'm going to be reading out of Matthew chapter 28. If you would uh, just like to relax and listen. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, wrecked the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angels, angels said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Well, good morning, officially. For those of you who have gotten up early and tuned in to be here with me on Easter morning, I want to remind you all, he is risen. I'm here. Uh, I'm sure that some of you probably just responded when I said that by saying he is risen indeed. That in fact is the cornerstone of our faith. And whenever I say that on Easter morning, it brings back a very fond, fond memory for me. Um, I've told you before, I have a dear friend named, named John Fogarty. John has gone on to be with the Lord. He left us way too early as far as I'm concerned, but uh, for whatever reason, God decided to call him on early. And the memory that I have is when I was in seminary on Easter morning, we hadn't even gotten up yet. It was very, very early. All of a sudden, a, a knock on my door, pounding on my door, knock, 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 pound, 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 just really, really hard, woke us up. I ran down thinking something was wrong and I opened the door and my friend John is standing there screaming and he's yelling, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. He'd been running through the neighborhood making that announcement. He ran past me, ran straight up the stairs of our apartment, right into my boy's bedroom. They were still sound asleep and he starts screaming, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. He even grabbed one of my sons and shook him a little bit. And then he took off and ran right out my front door just like he came in and went to the next house. That's the kind of excitement that we should have on Easter morning. That's the kind of excitement that we should have every morning when it comes to the thought of our Savior and what he did for us. The fact that he is alive. That is the cornerstone of our faith. Without a risen Savior, our faith would be misplaced. The Apostle Paul aptly points this out in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I would encourage you at some point this week to go back and read through that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It's quiet here this morning. I'm actually standing in the side parking lot of the Russian church on Dinkle Avenue in, in Bridgewater. I sure wish that we could physically be together this morning, but unfortunately we can't. I wish we were here to enjoy this sunrise together and follow it up with that deacon breakfast that we all look forward to. But for now, we just have to make do and we have to be thankful that we have this technology. I'm going to do things just a little bit different than I have done in the past. Instead of having you sit there and look at me while I deliver a message this morning, I'm going to have you focus on the rising sun behind me. Just watch as it begins to peak peek out over Massanutten Mountain. I actually have a poem that I want to share with you this morning. It's a little bit of a lengthy poem, so bear with me, which is why I just want to have you listen and enjoy the sunrise. 
The title of this poem is From a Garden to Good News. And it was written by a lady named Viola Carlton Hardin. Now, to be fair, I have to call this a collaboration piece because I have committed some sort of a sin here. I have actually tweaked her original poem in just a few places, and I've interjected a few of my own thoughts and expressions. Now, relax, but not so much that you fall back to sleep. And just as I read this poem, I want you to focus your heart and your mind on the events that led up to and surrounded that very first Easter morning in Jerusalem just over 2,000 years ago. From a Garden to Good News by Viola Carlton Hardin, mostly. Lord God, the Bible tells us every day there is a land far, far away, a lovely garden in the sun where once there came the Blessed One. A crown of thorns placed on his head had brought the blood to run bright red and a wooden cross they cut and made upon his back and shoulders laid. He tried to carry this heavy load, but stumbled and fell on the stony road. Yet there was one who did show love, and he carried the cross to the hill above. And there on the crest so close to the sky, Christ followed, followed the cross and knew he would die. But never a word or an angry tone did he accuse those guilty? No, not one. In a faraway country, in a land gone wild, they scourged the Savior, God's only child. They tortured him, but could not break his will, so they crucified Jesus on a bleak, lonely hill. On a roughly made cross set deep in the ground, they nailed his hands and feet and adorned him with a thorny crown. The sun beat down on Jesus in a merciless glow as his body hung there on that cross below. They had taken his robe and thrown it to the ground, and the soldiers bartered as they passed it around. A touch of water they knew he craved, but a sponge of vinegar was all they gave. And when he refused, they offered no more to still the agony and the pain he bore. He closed his eyes and began to pray, Father, forgive their deeds this day. He saw his mother softly cry, and she sadly watched him bleed and die. But he gave her care to another one to love and to protect when he was gone. With a spear, the soldier pierced his side, and the blood flowed freely a crimson tide, a sight the crowd had come to see as the blood ran red from Calvary. They had never thought of his father's love or that he witnessed this scene from up above. They did not know it was in his hands to destroy the world at his command. But o'er the shouting and the din, God heard his son call out to him. He saw each loved one stand and weep, so in death he closed his eyes in sleep. Surely God was angry now as he saw this cruel sight. For he took the bright and shining sun and turned it dark as night. The thunder rolled, the lightning flashed, and panic filled the air. While frightened ones down here below saw God's power and felt his discerning stare. While Christ yet hung upon that cross, the day was nearly gone, and loved ones waited hour by hour to claim God's only son. They took the broken body down, the crown of thorns cast on the ground. They wrapped him up and shrouded his face just down the hill was his resting place. They laid him in a lonely tomb and sealed the entrance tight. God sent an angel to watch over him and guard him through the night. No one allowed to enter, no one allowed to stay, but God was watching o'er his son and soon the stone was rolled away. One Sunday morning, early light, before the sun was nigh, loved ones came to see the Lord to say one last goodbye. But all they saw was an empty tomb and a stone now rolled away. Had someone taken the Savior out before the light of day? An angel sat beside the tomb and surely he was aware. The world would be changed by this message of hope. The truth was in the air. The Savior was alive. 
Jesus had arisen. He kicked in the gates of hell and was now free from death's prison. But on that sad day for the one who came, they could not believe that this to be true until the Savior called their name and they cried out, My Lord, it is you. And what a great reunion there as he was greeted one by one until the Father called to him to say, My son, come home. Jesus is just a breath away. One thought can take you there. And you can feel his presence when you go to him in prayer. Today is Easter once again. So let the voices ring in praise and honor for the one who is our Lord and our King. For in that land so far away from the silence, dark and gloom, our Savior rose at early dawn and came from out the tomb. Only the angels knew he arose to see him go away. But even they could not know how special was this day. The world has called this Easter morn a rebirth for the spring. But we rejoice that Jesus lives and he is coming back again. He bled and died upon that cross that you and I would live. And now he asks for love and trust that we should surely give. Ages come and ages go, but time can never dim. This precious day he gave away and yet belongs to him. And that's how Easter came to us that day at the break of dawn. And that's how Easter came to us. When an angel's voice echoed through time, the Savior rose this morning. Thank you for bearing with me through that poem. Her thoughts were beautiful. The sun's peeking right over top of Massanutten Mountain in these moments. It's beautiful. I've been watching the weather all week, worried about the sky, worried about the clouds, worried about the rain. But as you can see, I was worried for no reason, because no matter what, even if it was pouring down this morning and we couldn't see Massanutten Mountain, we know that the sun did rise. It is the cornerstone of our faith, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on this morning. I hope you're enjoying this. It's quite beautiful. Again, I wish we could be together. But for now, we can just know that we will be together in an for eternity, thanks to our Lord and Savior, thanks to his resurrection. What a beautiful day. Would you pray with me? Precious Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for loving us that much. Lord, I can't imagine what that must have been like for you, watching him be rejected. That had to be bad enough, but seeing Seeing Jesus betrayed and falsely accused and beaten and tortured and condemned and hung on that cross. I don't know how you didn't just wipe us all out in those moments, Lord. Thank you, Father, that your plan didn't end with Jesus dying on that cross. It didn't end with his body left to rot in that tomb. Lord, we love you. And as the sun rises on this new day, we thank you for the sacrifice and for the hope that the resurrection brings to all of our lives and to the knowledge that we will spend eternity with you. May we honor you and glorify you in all that we do and say on this day and every day to follow. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, I want to thank you again, and I'm going to turn things over to Ben here in just a couple of minutes. I think maybe we'll wait just a few. Just, just Let's just wait a minute and enjoy the sun. beautiful. But I know Ben's got some music and we can continue this time of worship together. Wow. Well, I hope to see you all again here in uh, just a couple of hours. I'll see you at 1030 for our regular Easter morning service. For now, I hope you can just enjoy the sunrise. Thank you and God bless. Good morning, Westside. It is bright and early. Um, it's not, you know, we're pre-recorded, so obviously it's not that early for us right now, but um, we are happy to see everybody. 
and we are treating this um, as Easter. So, um, as you can see, Sid's back with us. Hey guys! Um, happy to have her here. You don't have to listen to me just singing anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to put you through that for a couple weeks. Um, but we're just going to open up with a word of prayer before we get into our worship. So if you'll bow your heads. Dear Lord, uh, we just come before you today um, and we thank you uh, that you came down to save us and that you died on the cross for us, you died for our sins, um, and then you rose again on the third day. And um, we just ask that we remember all those things that you did for us. Every There's so much weight to it and we just pray that we can remember that today um, on Easter um, and just just celebrate in joy at your resurrection and um, um, just be ready for your second coming. Um, we pray all this in your name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing Happy Day. Greatest day in history Death is beaten, you have rescued me Sing it out i 
death by death Come awake, come awake Come and rise up from the grave Christ is risen from the dead We are one with Him again Come awake, come awake Come and rise up from the grave song together. This is Because He Lives.
live, and we thank you that um, we were dead in our sin, and we were in our graves, but you pulled us out of that grave. Um, you lifted us up, um, and we're just so thank thankful for that, and help us to just celebrate you today, and uh, in the weeks to come, and the years to come, and among amongst all the circumstances of coronavirus and everything, um, we still need to remember that your resurrection is an awesome thing, and we can glorify you and just celebrate um, in any circumstance. So thank you so much for that. We love you. We need you. Um, and just let us all go in celebration today of your resurrection. In your name we pray. Amen.